So, so we're going to talk about college now. How did you get into college? Where did you choose to go? Tell me more. Okay, so um, I went to J. Sarge first okay. out of high school, and then um, I went to VCU. Okay. Graduated from VCU. Um, Congratulations on thank that. Thank you. It was rough, man. It was rough? <laughs> rough as hell. Did you do it in four? No, I did it in three um, mm. because what I didn't know, no. Mind you, I went to community college first and I got an AA degree. So I assumed that I was going to go to VCU and just do two more years. Huh, no, it was like three. So, so you did five. Yes. Anyone who's okay. considering going to community college first, I really would tell them to reconsider. Just go straight to the four year university. Okay. So it's probably, it might be some young women who tune in there is going to be some young women that of course, tune in i'm here for the ladies so 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 if, if they want to go in your direction because i'm starting to see women doing the podcast oh, thing yeah. things like that so tell them what classes and shit like that you had to do for you to be able to step foot towards your, your your path well i went to school for mass communications and um most schools offer it and it just basically teaches you like it teaches you how to talk it teaches you how to be a news broadcaster that's what vcu's program does i don't know what other people's programs do but you can take different classes um to kind of shape your curriculum into what you want to do within mass communications um i chose the route of broadcast um of broadcast communications broadcast journalism because it was right up my alley um because radio is easy for real oh whoa tv is so difficult what all right so it's a difference between the two is what you're saying imagine having to speak with a camera in front of your face like you're doing right now precisely imagine <laughs> having to shoot footage imagine having to edit this footage imagine having to like do a lot of these things on your own you become a conglomerate um with radio exactly. it's easy because i can come into the studio with sweatpants on my hair messed up in a ponytail with a hat on and some crocs that might not be the same color as my outfit and guess who's gonna see me nobody okay okay Feel me where so tell me why don't you think so you work at 106.5 to beat so why don't they um do or do they be putting you know, footage on the internet because i don't really see it uh not really we can put it on there though if we want why to why y'all don't um some people just don't choose to you know we can do what we want though we have a lot of free reign okay at the okay. beat i will say that they give us a lot of free reign okay okay so being on the radio let, let's talk a little bit about that let's talk a little bit about that so just tell me more about that, your experience, how you like it, what you might not like, what you love. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I've been around radio since I was like 15, 16. I might have even been 14. Um, it started back when like they would allow listeners to like come to the station. Um, and that's what I used to do. I came up there with my mom. It all started when we were at Rust Bus. Do you remember when Rust Bus used to come here? I definitely remember that. Yes. Um, so my mom her well my uncle knows sir rj and my mom actually knew somebody else that was up there to kind of connect to everything together and um my mom was like oh yeah this is my daughter so and so and like she was she always tells people like this is what i want to do she wants to do tv she wants to do so radio. your mom was locked in the on connection. a radio as well yes my mom made the connection um so they were like okay just come up to the studio one day came into the studio and then i just never stopped coming up there like we me and my mom used to sit there i would like do my homework from school like so at this the was how old were you i was like i might have i might have been 15 um okay so i used to just come there often and they just couldn't get rid of me and then in college you know you had to get internships so i became an intern and after my internship i kind of just hung out hung around and they just started letting me be on air more and more okay and then the opportunity presented itself for an on-air position and Look who's there here. you go there you go so so how long what age was that when you first started so when i actually signed my paperwork to be paid to be okay. on the radio it was 2019 it was june 2019 so that's three years ago yep okay you were 25 uh yeah, yeah. okay okay so from 20 to 25 you were in school though right mm-hmm so you basically got it as soon as you got out of school 
Pretty much, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay. So you was doing that all at the same time. Exactly. All right, so once you signed, what changed in your life? Um, Nothing really changed. Things started changing most recently. Uh, once okay. I got the mid, like once I started doing middays, everything's changed now. Okay. Um, I started being able to, do, I got my first endorsement with NASCAR. That was a big deal. NASCAR? NASCAR. That's fire. Yeah. Um, we had the Toyota Owners 400 come to Richmond and they gave me an all access pass. Mind you, an all access pass is like 600 bucks. Right. Um, so, they gave me that. I was able to go like behind the scenes. Like I was like literally like the distance between us yes. with the drivers. Like we're in the owner's suite, chilling. We're down by the um the trailers and stuff. What race was this? Do you remember? Yeah, the Toyota Owners 400. Was it a lot of black people there? <laughs> it was some. It was some. Okay, okay, some. okay. So so you're you're at the NASCAR. You said it's the Toyota what? Owners 400. It was at the okay. Richmond Raceway. Okay. Yeah, it was a big event. Huge. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you got that endorsement now. You had a great time at the great. event. Who won? Um, Danny Hamilton. Denny Hamilton. He He's from Chesterfield, actually. Wow. Yeah. Or, well, he grew up in Chesterfield. I think he's from Florida, but he grew up in Chesterfield. So okay. that's pretty dope. Okay. That's pretty dope. And then Bubba Wallace was there. Um, he posed for one of my pictures. That was pretty cool. He is one of the... He's like the only black NASCAR driver, I think, in a... It's in a specific series. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's not a lot of black people in NASCAR, but he's really a groundbreaker. Plus, he's signed to Michael Jordan's team. Okay, okay. Big deal. That is definitely a big deal. Yeah. He must go really drive. Yeah. So, so 